Routing on the internet has some security, exposes people that are using to the internet to some security problems. So let's talk about one of them and then we'll talk a little bit about a solution that's actually out there deployed that allows people to communicate more securely in certain cases. What's, what's the core problem? So let's say that Alice is trying to access content uh, on a web server or some sort of server that's run by Bob. And let's say that Alice would prefer that people not know that she's accessing the content on Bob's server. Maybe that content is illegal in her country. Maybe she's worried about um, surveillance, whatever. Uh, she just wants to have a more private internet experience. What's the problem with traditional routing? Well, the problem with traditional routing is that in order for her to send a message to Bob or for Bob to send a message back to her, the fundamental nature of the IP protocol requires that all of the routers that are on this path are going to see IP packets that are either destined for Bob from Alice or uh, for, for Alice from Bob. All of these routers see the IP packet, so they see both the source and the destination. And so if someone is trying to determine, hey, is Alice talking to Bob, or is, who is Alice talking to? Is she accessing content on the server that's being run by Bob? All they have to do is uh, get access to one of these routers. And of course you might say, well that sounds ridiculous. I mean, how do you get access to a router? But a lot of the legitimate fears that we might have about the types of entities that would be eavesdropping on our internet communications are fears about governments. You know, big companies, big organizations that operate these networks. So it's not infeasible that, for example, the US government or the Chinese government or the North Korean government would actually have access to one of these routers and be able to spy on the traffic that's running across it. And every packet that's exchanged between these two carries these source and destination fields that are required by the IP protocol. And so it's fairly easy for someone to identify that Alice and Bob are communicating with each other. Okay, so let's talk about how we solve the problem. Um, the solution involves something that's called onion routing. And onion routing requires some security uh, and some encryption, but I, I just wanna sort of illustrate the, the main principle of it without getting into the gory details. So the main principle of onion routing is to establish a communication path between Alice and Bob, where only, where the routers on the path don't know where the packet is destined to go or where it came from. All the routers know is the router that sent them the packet and the next router that they have to send it to. The reason that this is called onion routing is because when Alice sends a message to Bob using this protocol, she wraps the message in a layer of instructions to each router along the path. So when she sends the message to the first router, it looks at the outer layer of the onion and that tells it where to send the message next. But it doesn't tell it where the message, it doesn't tell the router where the message is going. It also doesn't tell the router that Alice is the originator of this message. Um, all the router knows is that it got a message from her computer and which router to send it to next. So it peels off that layer of the onion. And again, we use security protocols to do this safely. So Alice encrypts this message with keys that are used by each router and that prevents the router from examining any other parts of the onion. So even if it wanted to, it can't find out where the message goes after it transmits it on. So now the message arrives at the next destination. That router uses the information in the next layer of the onion to figure out where to send the message next. It peels that layer off sends the message on, and we repeat this process until the message arrives. And the important thing to note here is, unlike IP routing, where the routers know both where the packet originated, the source address, and its final destination, the destination address, in onion routing, all the router knows is where it got the message from and where it's supposed to send the message next. It doesn't know that the message is going to Bob and it doesn't know that the message came from Alice. And so for securing certain types of communication, this can be very useful. Now obviously I need computers that are willing to participate in this protocol. Typical core internet routers don't run this sort of uh, routing protocol. It's much too slow. There's a lot of cryptographic operations I have to perform on, on every link, and so core internet routers don't do this. However, there is a network out there that's called Tor, 
And the Tor network consists of people all over the world who have volunteered to have their computers participate in this type of protocol. And so if you want to use Tor, there's actually plugins, I think at least for Firefox, if not for Chrome, that you can install that will allow your traffic to use the Tor network. Um, and what will happen is when you send a message to the Tor network, it'll be in, the, the path will be, uh, it'll be wrapped in this onion way, it'll be uh, transmitted in this way, and none of the routers in the path know where the message is from or where it's going. That's also an important thing for certain degrees of deniability. So for example, if I'm sending something that's illegal or uh, whatever, um, the person who's operating this um, router doesn't know that it came from me and doesn't know where it's going and doesn't know anything about the contents. And so if someone comes and bangs on their door and says, you know, uh, you sent traffic from this known terrorist Alice to this known terrorist Bob, the person running that could say, I actually had no idea where the traffic was going due to the nature of the protocol. So this is how onion routing works.